Well, listen, I'm staying here in a bando for tonight. I normally live in my car. Um, tell you uh, why I'm uh, staying in a bando tonight. It's going to be in the teens, uh, which means it's going to be under 20. It's going to be very, very cold. Uh, more like 15, 15 degrees tonight. Last night was uh, 23. Very, very bad. It cost a whole lot of money to keep my car running. And then I also, um, the battery on my uh, carbon monoxide is out. And uh, I don't really have the money to go ahead and buy a new battery for it. So this saves me gas money. This saves me, um, you know, um, having to buy a battery I can't afford. So staying here, I've, um, I've camped out in the back a few times. I'm actually inside now. So first time. Uh, there's always risk and rewards. Like no place that you stay at is going to be safe ever. Whether it's a truck stop, a rest area, uh, staying in your car, things happen. Same thing here. Um, I do have some measures to, you know, like alert me if something should go on, but I think I'll be okay. It's a lot warmer in here than, uh, than outside, let me tell you. So, um, trucking went bad. Uh, this will help you um, give some context to the, the very first video that I posted on long, uh, you know, long form video. Is, so you don't, you know, you should go back and watch it if you haven't, but you could watch this and then go watch the other and then it can make more sense. This, this is gonna have more details. So when I went regional after doing over the road, one of the first things that happened was um, um, I uh, forgot to send my um, my dispatch uh, my departure to to my dispatch. So I'm I'm brand new. I was making I made a couple of mistakes, but you know, there should really wasn't wasn't that that crazy. It just I worked with people that were extremely hostile, very violent, uh, not violent, very uh, toxic um, people that would um, you know they're the type of people that put down somebody just to feel better about themselves. And uh, I'm gonna get into that in a minute. Um, but nonetheless, I forgot to send a, uh, my departure message and why I forgot, not that it matters, I forgot, so that is on me. I take accountability for that. Is um, uh, this guy was uh, peeing outside uh, of uh, like right, right where my truck was when I was ready to send it. And I thought, okay, I'm gonna go ahead and just move forward and just get out of, you know, I don't want that stuff going on around me. I'm gonna move forward and then I'll send, send the message. I, uh, I moved forward and I kept driving and I forgot to send the message. What happened was, is um, when I walk inside the office, um, uh, the day drivers are, are now in there, you know, getting their assignments. You don't always have to go in there. It normally gets into your phone, but people go in there, they socialize, maybe get some coffee, use the restroom. Um, you know, if there's a problem with a truck or a trailer, they go in there. Nonetheless, I go in there and that dispatcher just starts screaming and yelling at me. And when he was doing that, I told him, you know, one, he was being very hostile, like he was getting too close to me, but he was screaming and yelling and he was like, why didn't you send that dispatch message? You should have known to do that. I needed to know what the trailer's number was and, and it kept going on. And when he's doing that, I said, hey, do you see me screaming? Do you see me uh, doing any of that stuff? You know, can you talk to me calmly? Can you talk to me with, the, with some respect? You don't have to yell. And then he kept yelling after, after uh, I said that. And uh, when he kept yelling, I said, if you have to get your point across um, by yelling, you are the real idiot. And when I said that, he started acting like, um, like a cracked out chicken. He was moving his arms and he balled up his fist. And I'm, um, I'm like at the back of the office and uh, no place for me to walk or anything like that. And he balls up his fist. I put my bag down and kind of had my hands up like this. And I said, uh, uh, not like all the way like this, but kind of had them up, up a little bit. I didn't throw a stance with them. I had my hands up because, you know, it looked like the guy was going to hit me. And I told him, I said, I said, are you going to hit me? And when I said that, he said, uh, uh, actually, he didn't say nothing. He, uh, when I said, are you going to hit me? He kept staring at me. And I said, you need to get away from me right now. And when I said, you need to get away from me right now, he said, or what? So he said, or what like that? And I said, like the whole room like turned dim. Like this is, the, I'm gonna to try to tell you this the best way I know how. It was like everybody in that place when it went dim, it went quiet, that like you could drop a pin drop on there. And I said, I said, you're gonna get hurt. And when I said that, uh, it's not, you know, I'm repeating the story. Uh, however, if you would have been there, it was like that guy literally could have crapped his pants. He got. You know, even though he was one who's being hostile and trying to be intimidating and stuff like that, and it wasn't going to fly with me. I don't care who the person is. I'm going to stand my ground. And I just don't like people getting that close. Within three feet, screaming, and you ball up your fist, and you're moving around like you have adrenaline going through you. I mean, those are all signs of hostility. And uh, quite frankly, I'm, um, you know, I work there. You know, I'm not trying to take it there. I mean, I will defend myself. I will tell somebody to get the hell away from me 
Yeah, if I had a, if I had a chance to walk away, I would have. I had nowhere really to go. I had a wall against, <laughs> literally, the wall was against my back, kind of like now in this bando. However, uh, I said that, and then another driver, who was a day driver, he um he he was like, hey man, uh, uh get, get away from get him away from get him away from. And he started moving the guy, uh, the dispatcher, who I just said, you know, when he said, oh, what? I said, you're going to get hurt. He um, then screams, I'm calling security on you. You just threatened me. And I said, I didn't threaten you. You asked me what would happen if you didn't get away from me when you're being hostile and you're, you're, you're showing me signs of uh, aggravation and hostility. I said, I said, you don't need to call, uh, you don't need to call security. I'm leaving right now. And he's like, you're fired. You're fired. I'm terminating you. And I didn't argue with the guy. I was like, okay. And I started walking out the door. And when I was doing that, there was literally like at least 20 other drivers. None of the drivers uh, there at the time I knew. I got to know them later, but I didn't know them at that time. I walk out. When I walk out, uh, the drivers were like, man, you know, you showed some restraint, dude. I thought you were going to, you know, beat the brakes off of him. And I was like, if he didn't move, I was going to grab his eye and, and show it to him. <laughs> I was going to pull his eye out and show it to him, you know, uh, you know. Yeah, that's exactly what I, what I said. And they're like, you know, no, nah, man, you showed some real good restraint. He's like, hey, he can't fire you. Even if you even if you were to attack him right now or if you guys were to go fight, he can't fire you. Only the, um, the person who, uh, who's running the, um, um, the, the, the dedicated uh, contract, you know, the person up, uh, up higher than the dispatcher. So I was like, all right. And they're like, hey, man, um, you know, give him a call later today and, and talk to him. I was like, yeah, uh, I'll give him a call. And they're like, yeah, don't let, don't let his, uh, his bad attitude, you know, you know, um, you know, get to you and like, man, dude, I can't believe that, you know, um, you know, that, that he tried to step to you like that. You know, he must be off his rocker. And I said, I guess so. Um, I called, a, I called like the manager dude. Um, you know, I, I, I was driving nights, so I went to sleep, but I woke up around 12 o'clock in the afternoon just to call him, you know, cause I go in at nights, he, the dude's uh, hardly ever there, you know, at that time, he started coming in earlier so that night drivers can't talk to him and shit like that. So anyways, I give him a call and uh, he was expecting, he's like, yeah, I didn't know what time you got up and I didn't want to wake you up. He's like, this dude, um, you know, first and foremost, you're not fired. I said, okay. He's like, you know, I'd love for you to come, you know, come in and like everything be the same. He's like, you could talk to human resources. You could make uh, a complaint about this. But um, I would like to handle this in house and have the opportunities. Like he he just did this last week. Something very similar to another driver, and um, you know we're keeping an eye on him. And you know he's like he works a very stressful job. And I told him I was like I don't take things personally. I said it, it you know another driver told him to move out of the way. Uh, you know like got him out of the way. I didn't move. Uh, that dude needed to move because I had no area to move. And I was gonna I was gonna uh, protect myself. And I'm not going to wait for somebody to throw the front punch, you know, first punch at me, you know. Um, you're in my area. If I ask you to leave and you're showing me hostility, he needed to either leave or we were going to see what happens. And uh, to tell you the truth, I, I know what would happen. Uh, you know, there was no winning in that situation. I would have been charged, um, you know, for fighting or whatever, and I would have done it. And that guy would have left an ambulance. You know, that's, that, that's how that would roll. And I know that everybody's a tough guy until they meet one. I don't carry myself like I could beat up everybody and stuff like that. In fact, I don't even, um, you know, I don't even want to want to hurt anybody. I will, though. You know, I'm a man. I will protect myself, especially against people that are, you know, that, uh, you know, that act that way towards me. You know, um, sometimes that's the only language that they'll understand, unfortunately. So a guy tells me that, you know, he'd like to handle it in-house. And uh, had I talked to anybody? And I said no. And I said, listen, I don't take it personally. I said, uh... I said, if, if somebody really has that much of an issue with me, I have no problem giving them my address and we can do it there. I said, but I, when I go to work, man, that's, that's what I'm about. I, I, I go there to work. Uh, of course, I watch out and look, at, look, at, look, you know, look out for the drivers. Uh, in fact, uh, a lot of people have looked out for me. You know, tell me what routes, uh, you know, like things to watch out for. Take this, uh, take this direction instead of going there. You know, your Garmin, you know, certain navigation system might do something else. Some of the stuff with ELDs running, uh, you know, they ran a different ELD system than I was used to. You know, the, they, they give me heads up and, and, and they were cool about it, man. And I, I'm going to pay that forward, you know. So he's like, yeah, I had, uh, he's like, I had a couple of senior drivers in there that, um, that were just really, really impressed about your restraint and how that dispatcher was in the wrong. And, um, and I'm glad that you could show that amount of restraint. And I said, well, you know, it's pretty easy to, to hold that restraint when you know that you can do something like that to somebody. I said, I'm not looking for any, um, any excuse to put my hands on somebody. In fact, I'd like to not do it, you know, and, um, 
it's like you know that uh, um you know basically saying that, that that i got a bunch of compliments uh from people that that, that could appreciate somebody who um you know stood up like that and then also you know was able to carry themselves uh like an adult basically it also um gave me you know got me a lot more respect uh, among everybody who quite didn't know me and um you know they were you know really blown away by it they were they you know thinking it was cool i they always saw them and now the day people know you know like um that i i meet somebody easy to talk to somebody that uh, you know isn't gonna take it there and that i watch out you know and that that's cool with me so um uh a little bit later, you know, um, the night drivers, they hired a bunch new, a uh, bunch of them. So like at first there was like maybe 20 of us that ran nights. Now they got something like 75. So a bunch of people started coming in, new hires, and a lot of them didn't know how to drive uh, very well. They just got their, uh, their class A, um, you know, they're making mistakes. One dude um, had hit three vehicles in one week. Upon him doing that, I hear them talking about it upstairs, uh, well, not upstairs, but in the office, them talking about um, it in the office, and they're saying, what I really think he needs to do is watch this video that will uh, help him, and this video is um, close encounters with other vehicles, something stupid like that, like, and I'm thinking, you hit three vehicles in one week, you don't need to watch any video, you need to um, be retrained, or somebody needs to tell you you know, to stop being distracted, something to wake you up, or you just don't need to be a driver at that point. Uh, I'm not to say, but I, I will say hitting three vehicles in one week. No, that guy should have been fired or should, you know, actually, yeah, you should have been fired. He shouldn't have even happened, you know, that, that close together, you know, but I don't make the decisions, but they hired a bunch of people. And when they hired a bunch of people, um, what uh, started happening was the, the people that knew each other, um, you know, uh, like the, the regular night people, they um, uh, they started getting worried, uh, not worried, but like their routes that they normally had dedicated, like they always pick up here and they always deliver there. And I never had that. I was being sent everywhere. Like I'm a little man on the totem pole. I did whatever, right? Their dedicated ones started being taken away and they started um, making it a little bit more even towards people switching up what routes. Sometimes they didn't always get their dedicated. Maybe they got their dedicated twice a week. And then the other times they're getting other ones. So um, everybody's uh, attitudes are changing where it's, they would rather, um, you know, better you than me. So if something bad happened to you, bad, I'm glad that it happened to you and not me, you know? And their attitudes changed. No more, no, nobody's really looking out for each other like that anymore. Um, now it's like if, you've, if somebody finds out that you have a good route that night, they're, um, they're uh, going inside the place and uh, making up straight up lies, trying to throw you under the bus, trying to kiss people, you know, the, the, the dispatcher's butts so that they can start getting their good, good route. Me, I never did that. And I've always had issues with, uh, with the dispatchers. The first one being what I just told you, you know, where the guy act like a crack-headed chicken. And um, when I told him, are you going to get hurt? I did throw my hands up. And he was about a half a second before finding out what, uh, you know, what I can do, you know. And uh, thankfully, that didn't happen because I would have lost in that situation anyways. Even if the guy was able to beat me up, uh, <laughs> we both lose, you know. Like, I, I either put you uh, in the hospital or you put me in the hospital or, um, you know, one of us is going to go to jail. And how quickly he was tell you know, how quickly he was like, I'm calling security, you threatened me. I know what he was trying to do. He didn't expect for me to stand up like that, or he was pushing my buttons on purpose to, you know, to try to do something. I don't know, you know, I'll, I'll leave it up to you guys, drop them in the comments, but it's just really crazy. And I don't, you know, I, I don't get the people that act like that. Like, we're not cut from the same cloth, man. You are nothing like me. You, you are so far gone. You, you know, I'm actually probably from a different planet. You know, I, I'm alien in the sand over here. You know what I'm saying? So, um... I uh, kept getting really bad trucks and trailers that were messed up. I, um, the, the million milers and uh, the senior drivers, they were, um, I caught them red-handed. They were pulling airlines when they got a route that they didn't like. So they pull a line, they kept doing it, and I, I caught them. I was like, what are you doing that for, man? You know, that load needs to go out. You know, I know that you don't like that route, but somebody's better than none, dude. What, and, and now they're going to try to give that to somebody else. So anytime that I complained, like, hey, this trailer, let's say, for example, this 2424, like, you know, trailer 2424 has got an air leak and then it, uh, it's got a flat tire, you know. The next driver that walked in that said, you know, what's my load for the night? I haven't been assigned anything. He
he'd give that, uh, uh, the dispatcher would give um, that new driver the, the same load that I, turned, I, I had to turn down because it, I legally can't drive it. And it, it, they did that in front of me and I would interrupt the dispatcher. I'd be like, hey, well, dude, I just told you what was wrong with that, man. There's an air leak right there. What are you doing trying to give somebody else my trailer? And their answer was, uh, everybody's the captain of their own ship. They can decide what, uh, what you know, he hasn't even pre-tripped it yet. Maybe he's okay with it. And I go, no, dude, if I tell you it's bad, and I said, I said, if a driver comes in here and tells you that that, 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 that trailer is bad or that truck is bad and it shouldn't be on the road, didn't pass their pre-trip, um, you know, don't ever give it to me. Uh, you know, if you want to give it to me, that's fine. But if you give it to me and I find out somebody else did that, I'm just going to, you know, come over here and, uh, and complain to you. You know, I'm going to uh, bug you. I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to talk uh, loud enough for everybody in the office, all the drivers coming in there, to make you look like a fool. And I'm going to do it in a way that is um, very adult-like, you know. Like, hey, man, I can't believe you tried to give me that trailer, dude. You know that trailer's got a bald spot on that side of that tire. You know that we got DOT officers always outside pulling us over and doing inspections on us. There is no way this could pass. What are you doing giving that to another person? Right? And that, then I would do that. And the they did not like it. So they started playing with my money. And the way they would play with your money is, is literally uh, shuttle, you're, you're shuttling trailers all, all, all night for $15 an hour, uh, not $15 an hour, for $15 a shuttle, and these shuttles took at least an hour to, to, to do it. No matter how fast you were, they're, they're, they're in between other trailers, you have to get the yard dog to move stuff for you to grab it. It was never any easy, let me grab this and get out of here. Oh man, I just made 15 bucks in 10 minutes. There's no way. So now all night doing that, only getting you know four or five trailers uh, uh, in, and you know, because some of them take over an hour, you know, I'm just saying this, the quickest you can do it is an hour. Now I'm not making hardly any money. So that's uh, to add to some of the context of, um, you know, the first video, and this also will help uh, people watching this one to uh, check out the other one, or, you know, at least hear my story, and I appreciate it. Six of uh, stuff that was going on there was um, literally, I got an education of, uh, you know, what people were telling me stuff, some, a lot of the stuff that they were teaching me was really good about helping routes, but literally what, you know, it's like, these are all the way stations around here are running at night. They don't have a chase car. So when you're over, uh, you know, overweight or, you know, you can't make weight on, um, on certain axles, you don't have to pull into that way station. They don't have a chase car to pull you over. Uh, how to how to run without having to use your ELD, you know, like, you know, basically instead of using paper log, uh, paper logs back in the day, they used to be able to pencil in stuff. They ran with two different log books, one that was would pass the DOT, the other log book was what they really ran and they would hide it, you know. Uh, this is, uh, I was taught how to do that kind of crap and I wasn't taught like, hey, I, I do it. It's, they would talk amongst themselves of, uh, hey, do do this and do that, on the, you know, amongst themselves and this is when, you know, uh, everything started getting toxic. There's no way in hell I'm gonna run like that. You don't pay me enough for me to ruin my license. Now, they all got away with it, but you only get away with stuff like that for so long, you know? So that, uh, that's to add more context to, to you know, what happened trucking. Uh, basically, it was terminated from that job, but they didn't write it down as a termination. They wrote down that I quit. So I, next new job, after doing a lot of research, spending time thinking, okay, I just wanna find a trunk, trucking company, where uh, everything that I taught and everything I was taught um, you know, during school, everything I was taught when I did 50,000 miles with a trainer, that we, you know, we can continue. Now, when I did over the road, I don't have stories where, where I was overweight and stuff like that. I do have stories where they sent us to residential areas. Or when I was by myself uh, running my own truck, uh, it would send me in, uh, in spots that the truck had no business being in. You know? That stuff did happen. It wasn't as often as the other stuff, but uh, over the, the, the road trucking, when I actually ended up switching, you know, switching jobs and uh, going to the company I just uh, talked about, I was so dehydrated, man. I was like, for five days, it took me uh, drinking water until things started looking clear, if you know what I mean. Uh, it's hard to hydrate and, and run and make money. You know, I was drinking water at night so I wouldn't have to stop every hour or two to use the bathroom, you know? Um, so. Uh, that's definitely some more context for you. Um, so do all this research, I find, and I'm like, you know what, what I want is I still want to drive at night because that really does help out in regional. You know, it gives, gives me, you know, some of the stuff that has advantages and some disadvantages, but uh, for regional, I, I prefer driving at night. So I'm like, I need to find something that's hourly. I need to find something that, that I drive at night. I need to find something where I'm home every single day. I need to be able to catch up on my bills. 
I need to catch up, you know, I need to start working on my credit. My credit, you know, is getting, getting pretty bad. I go ahead and I find, I think I found, you know, at the time I thought it was, uh, you know, a great company and everything else. I go through the motions, um, you know, very first day of working, I get a truck that has uh, no oil inside the engine. It's like, when I pull that stick out, it had none in there. I'm like, dude, I'm not driving this. You know, maybe that was my early warning sign, but I'm like, I'm going to give them a chance. I'm going to be patient and see. They finally get me a truck, and uh, the truck is old. It's like, you know, I'm like, I'm not, I'm not going to be with me. It's a brand new truck. It's old. It's got miles on it. It's, um, you know, for regional work, I'm still driving a full-size sleeper, just to let you know. So with that company, started uh, when I, you know, I got paid hourly. So if I was, um, you know, if I was doing a repair myself or if I took it to a shop or, um, you know, uh, things took a long time for live and load and stuff like that, I was getting paid for, for, for everything that I, that I was doing. So I thought that, you know, if, if that kind of stuff happened, they're going to want me, you know, like who I get, who I get live and loaded with are going to do it quickly, you know, and that, and that was okay with me. You know, I'd rather, I'd rather be working than sitting around too much, you know? So, uh, some of the routes were extremely, extremely hard to back in there. You have to pull in from the side and you're, you're not, it's illegal to, to, uh, reverse on a service street or a service road. It, it doesn't matter. So some of the uh, routes you have to reverse all the way. Um, the last company, they had them as well. And I would argue with them. I would, I would get to the place after pre-planning and then seeing how the dock was set up. I had to do it. You know, I could have done it or I could have took it back. Uh, it being nighttime, I did reverse and, and, and put it in uh, the hole and everything was okay. And I told them to never send me there again. If they were to send me there uh, again, I'm calling safety and telling them why I'm not going to do it. And then that would stop them. You know, it would stop them until they would, you know, wait a couple weeks and then try to give it to me again. I'm like, dude, you know, that one right there, I had to reverse down a busy street for over a quarter of a mile. And they'd be like, it's nighttime. I don't care. It's illegal. Not doing it. You know? Yeah, the first time you gave me that route, I didn't know that that's exactly how I had to back in, and then that was the only way to back in and stuff like that. But, um, you know, instead of bringing back the load, I saw an opportunity to, to go ahead and do it, and then I was, um, I guess I was being cool enough to be like, all right, I got it in there for you guys because it was safe to do so, even though I was bending and breaking the rules. However, I'm not going to bend and break the rules anymore. And, um, you know, uh, don't send me there. So with the new company started having me grab uh, over a uh, uh, really overweight stuff, stuff that was 10, 20,000 pounds overweight inside the, the, the back of the trailer. Um, you know, uh, kept on, uh, you know, their equipment was messed up all the time. Um, I did get paid for, for waiting around for it to get fixed. A lot of nights it didn't get fixed. I, was, I remember several times me calling saying, I can't take this trailer, it's got a flat. Do you got something else for me to grab? And I go, no, just wait there for road service. And me wait all night and then have to tell uh tell uh tell my real dis like the, my real dispatcher during the day who uh for him to get something done the night dispatchers were just literally somebody you call on the phone there's not they're not even in the office they're not, they're not even in the same state as me so i would call them and uh they'd be like no no that's you just wait for the wait for um you know uh for somebody to come over there and fix it you know i'll all right so eventually that um that uh started getting really really bad of um you know kept on sending me on uh, routes where, uh, where you, you know, backing in, started sending me on, um, you know, real uh, tight uh, local spots that it was very difficult. The trailers and the trucks were always messed up. And I never got an argument where, or, or anything like that with my dispatcher uh, at that place. We never argued, but I would, uh, I would tell, I would express my concerns and he'd just say, okay. He'd be like, all right. I'm like, like, I can't do that one because I, I'm not backing in from the street. I can't take this load, dude. You know, and he, he, he would say things like, well, it's only 20 miles. You're not going to go through a way station. No, you're right. I'm not going to go through a way station. However, if something happens within those 20 miles, guess what's going to happen to me? Negligence is still, um, you know, I'm still uh, responsible. With that company, what actually started happening was because I was like, you know, um, trucks are breaking down, taking long to repair. They started putting me on local stuff, but they didn't have enough stuff for me to do. I, held, I wasn't going to break any rules. So literally, I was only working two or three hours a night. Something had to give. I wasn't making enough money. I don't know if, if it was true that they, you know, they did it for that or did it because had the drivers were taking hot loads and doing those things, but boom, you know, so I had to, had to move forward. I also wanted to touch on something, um, not the, the very last company, but the one I was talking about where the, the dispatcher was like a crackhead. Uh, two different occasions, 
I had uh, people pull out uh, the Fourth of July's uh, out on me, and it it was uh, mostly the dispatcher's fault why it happened. I do want to tell those stories just to add more details on the kind of crap that I went through and that a lot of people go through. You know, I'm not playing some victim here. Maybe trucking's not for me. Maybe there's a trucking company out there that will run exactly, uh, you know, uh, right. I don't want to uh, go, um, you know, knowing the rest of my life. That something, ha that something happened to somebody's family because I took a trailer because I thought about money more than I thought about the safety of the people on the road. There's not enough money out there for that and it could literally ruin my life, it will ruin theirs, it will ruin their families and that's not something I'm interested in living with. So the first, uh, the first time uh, I had a light bulb that was out uh, on my, uh, my uh, tractor, I go, I go in there and of course they never keep spare bulbs I'm a night driver, so I can't just drive uh, at night and I have one light, one light working. I can get pulled over, and I, like I said, uh, you know, I got inspected five times. The person who trained me and a lot of people I know they've been uh, driving for over 20 years, they may be inspected once or twice. Me, five times, past all of them, flying colors, you know, which is great. That raises my score. You know, that 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 that's something that's good for me, and it also is good for the company. Or any company I moved to, I have a higher score, so it boosts up their rankings, and uh, you know it's, it's an all over. You know, it's, it's a good thing. So the first time, uh, my bulb's out. I go tell them. They say to go take one off of a truck. This is at night. Everybody's already left for their stuff. I've been fooling around with, uh, you know, how, where am I going to light? They were trying to tell me just to go to a truck stop. There's one, you know, five seven miles. Pick up the bulb there. Use uh, the company card. And I'm like, nope, not leaving the yard with the light out. Not going to do it. They finally tell me to go ahead and grab one off of a truck. I go ahead and I go to a truck and I start taking it off. And when I'm taking it off, I'm underneath the hood. Uh, the truck starts moving. So now I know somebody's in there. So I turn and look, look right at the, the front of the windshield while I'm underneath the hood uh, off on the driver's side. Guy comes in there and I scream, don't you dare point that at me. And he's like, well, well, what are you doing? And I said, they told me to take a, a light bulb off of uh, one of the trucks. And then he says, I hope I hope you're not taking my light bulb. I have to leave at two in the morning, and I'm going I'm going over here. That means that I'm going to have to go to the truck stop. And I said I didn't know that you were in, in here sleeping. Um, uh, I'm going to put the light bulb back. Uh, you know, um, I'll grab it. I'll grab one from another truck. He's like, but that's really messed up. What you're doing is making another truck driver have to go there. And I said I said these. I said uh, the person in the office. I said the person's name to him. I said they're the ones who told me to come out here and grab one off of the truck. I said you can go in there and talk to the guy. And he's like, yeah, but you're hurting other drivers. And I go, no, I'm not. I go, these are, these are not our trucks, man. These are the company's trucks. If they tell me to take a part off of, of one of them to put it on mine, that's what I'm going to do. I, uh, you know, I didn't mean to wake you up, so I am sorry for waking you up, but that's, I'm, grabbing a, I'm grabbing a light bulb. You know, but I'm just not going to do it from yours. I'm, I'll go to another truck since you're sleeping in here. Or I could take this and you can go in the office and you can complain to them. <laughs> he just, you know, standing out there and he's pissed off and just says, okay. I put the light bulb back, I close the hood, he actually checks to make sure the light works, you know, I'm like, of course it works. I walk over to another truck and I'm doing the same thing, but two other drivers walk by and that guy is running his mouth saying, you know, how he pulled out on me, it's 4th of July, and I, I walk back over there because I hear him, and I was like, yeah, he telling you what he, what he did? And there again, I said, I said you, you shouldn't be running your mouth like that, and then I said, in fact, you, you can put that down uh, and, and uh, you know, uh, you can put that down and we can settle this, you know, don't be running your mouth. In fact, you know, nobody's really supposed to be doing that. Like it's against the company policy. I'm not going to snitch. I'm not going to say nothing to anybody. Like when the drivers did stuff like that, I never went in the office to kiss their butt and say, oh, this driver didn't slide their tandems or this driver was overweight. I never did that stuff. You know, I would tell them though, if when they're about to leave, Hey man, you've got a massive air leak, dude. You're not even going to be able to make it on the freeway, dude. You're gonna, you know, you're gonna hurt somebody really bad out there, and not just hurt them, but I just, can't, you know, you, you get what I'm saying. It's gonna be a catastrophic uh, event. So I would tell people and warn them and stuff like that. And some of them were like, you know, hey, you know, say the dispatcher's name, man, he's just not, he's just not budging. I'm like, tell them, and I would tell them my name. They tell them I said that I that uh, that and that I am a, a very good driver, and you tell them that I've been around for a while. You tell them that I said that there was no way in hell that I would take it. So why should you? And they would do that. And of course that made them hate me more, you know, and not like me, but they never liked me in the beginning. So what does it matter? I'm just trying to look out for the general public, you know? Um, second time was uh, I dropped off a trailer. I had to grab an empty 
Uh, there was another uh, OTR, it was not another, but it was an OTR driver for a different company who was blocking, uh, blocking my way. And I had knocked on the, the vehicle and I, I was like, I was like, I just need you to move your trailer. I just need you to move your trailer, man. Move your, you know, move a little bit. Let me, let me grab my trailer and get the hell out of here and nothing. So I call my dispatcher and I'm like, hey, I know you want me to come back with this empty and it's windy out. I don't really want a bobtail anyways. I want to grab this empty and I want to be safe on the road. I go, but there's this truck and this truck ain't moving, man. And I'm knocking on it and, and they're not answering. And he's like, you threatened to call the cops. You threatened them to, you know, you, that you're going to get them kicked off a lot. You tell them that the, your dispatcher is going to make their life hell and they need to get out of the way. So I go over there and I'm pounding on it now because they didn't answer the first time pounding on it. And I'm telling, and I'm, and I'm, when I'm doing this, I'm like, I'm like, I'm not the cops. I don't care. Just move. Let me get my empty. And it was a female driver. She rolled the window down, and, and I said, Whoa, there's no, no need for that. I just need you to move out of my way. And she's like, Yeah, I don't open my door or talk to anybody at night. And if I do, this is what comes out. And I said, Fair enough. I said, Fair enough. Just please move. Let me get my. I said, I said, Let me get my empty and get the hell out of here. And she moved. So those are some of the stuff. Uh, I'm sitting on a sleeping bag right now. I got a 40 degree and then I got a 30 degree and doubling up with that. And then uh, being inside this bando, I, I'm pretty sure it'll keep me warm. Um, I also have some candles and stuff like that that I can you know, huddle for, uh, for, for warmth. But uh, you know, I do want to thank everybody that uh, has been subscribing, all the positive comments, even ones that aren't so positive. At least you took your time to, to write something and I do appreciate that. Um, I do have Cash App. I'm gonna have it in the description. If you want to bless me, if you want to show some love, cool. If you don't want to, it's no problem. Uh, it's Cash App is uh, the same as my YouTube name, Alien Ascend. Hope you guys subscribe and hope you stick around. Thank you.